Well, I'd like to introduce Veronica Haynes. She's here from the UCF Office of Experiential Learning. Uh, and she's here to talk to you about the networking event that's coming up uh, and the career fair, which is also on the same day. Uh, so let's give her a warm welcome. Um, so how's everybody doing this afternoon? Good. Kind of got some food. Okay, okay, okay. Um, so again, my name is Veronica Haynes. Um, I am here from um, Experiential Learning. Um, and so just here to talk to you about how to navigate a career fair, um, but also how to navigate a networking event. Um, so just kind of give you a little bit of backstory. These um, workshop series or presentations came about because of a partnership that we have with the Burnett Honors College. Um, so we've always had our internship fair, um, but last spring um, we partnered with you all in order to host a networking event. So that networking event takes place the morning of our internship fair. Um, from 8 to 9.45. Um, and so that's a great opportunity for you all um, as Burnett Honors College students because some of the employers that are attending the internship fair will be attending the networking breakfast. So that'll give you an opportunity to talk to some of those employers um, in a smaller setting. But then there are also some employers that are attending that event that won't be attending the internship fair. And so again, that's more opportunities for you all, hopefully to be able to secure internships throughout your time here at UCF. Um, so again, just quickly, so to highlight some key important events. So one, as I stated, the uh, Burnett Honors College Networking Breakfast from eight to 9.45. That'll be in the Addition Financial Arena. It'll be on the second floor. You'll come in on the first floor, check in, and then be able to go up to the event on the second floor. Um, and then there's the internship fair that takes place that day from 10 to two also in um, the arena. And then also the Career Expo that is um, the following week on September 24th. Um, so I always like to tell students that the Career Expo is still a good opportunity for you all to find internships because there are employers um, that connect with us on campus that recruit students both for internships and full-time opportunities. So some employers may come to our internship fair and go to the Career Expo, or they may choose just to go to the Career Expo um, because they are recruiting students for both opportunities. Um, so again, that's a great opportunity for you all because essentially within the next two weeks, you have three opportunities in order to talk to employers, start networking with them, but then also potentially start um, securing some internships as well. Um, so just kind of give you a little bit of rundown of what we'll talk about today. So quickly give a brief overview of my office as well as our career services office. Talk a little bit about why it's important for you all to start attending career fairs and networking events. Also give you some tips on how do you prepare for both of these events. And then I'll have a space for questions. But if at any time I get to a slide and you all have questions, feel free to ask those questions. Then you don't have to wait till the end. Um, so a little bit about my office. So experiential learning, we focus on helping students to find opportunities and gain experience while you are here in college. And our main focus is on internships. So we have staff members who are uh, connected to each one of the uh, majors or departments here on campus. So I am the liaison to the Burnett Honors College, but we also have faculty members that are connected to you all based on majors. Um, and I can follow up, I forgot to add that in the slide, but I can follow up after that with that specific information if you wanna know who your liaison is for your major. Um, so we do internship advising, so if you are trying to figure out what potential internships um, are out there for you based on your major or your career choice, um, also think about how do you actually search and find those opportunities, we can help you with that. Um, we do have an internship course, so if you are interested in receiving academic credit for your internship and having it show up on your transcript, we can help you out with that process as well. Um, we do do resume and cover letter reviews. Um, so where we differ from career services is career services kind of can give you that general overview and feedback on a resume, but we can really help you to target that resume based on your industry, but also based potentially on specific employers. Um, we also do interview prep as well. We don't do the practice interviews as career services does, 
but we can give you some tips. Um, so a lot of times you may have a student who receives an interview at a last minute and so there aren't any appointments available in career services so you can always set up an appointment with us and we can be able to go over some general information and feedback for you um, and then we are relaunching our job shadow program so career services used to host that program our office took it over so we will have two sessions um, the fall session and the spring session um, we are starting from scratch, so the number of employers and opportunities right now um, is very limited, but our hope is that we, we, be, we'll, we will be able to grow that and so provide more opportunities to you all as students. Um, and then again, um, because we are partners with Career Services, we do like to talk about them as well. Um, and so they really help students out with that major exploration, um, but not just figuring out what you want to major in, also thinking about what you can do with that major. Um, and so you can set up appointments with Career Services staff to do that. And then they come in on the end piece with what we call employability. So once you figured out what you want to major in, um, once you've gained that experience, thinking about ready to graduate and searching for opportunities. Um, they also have a staff member who is dedicated. <laughs> Nobody moved in 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> they also have a staff member who um, works specifically with students that are interested in going into graduate school. And so they can help out with that process. So thinking about um, you know, potentially searching for different um, graduate school programs or um, creating your personal statement. Um, or if you go to graduate school here at UCF, that um, you can also connect with that staff member as well. So ultimately, there are lots of people on this campus who can help you out throughout your time here from gaining experience to preparing you for once you are ready to graduate. Um, so in thinking about why you should attend either an internship fair, the career expo, or even a networking event. Um, so one, the ultimate thing for us is to be able to help you all secure internships or to secure that job. Um, also thinking about attending networking events, attending career fairs, they are an opportunity for you to what I call window shop. So I know some of you all are first year students and so you all may be thinking you're not in your majors or can you secure internships. And so this is still a good opportunity for you all to see what potential internships are out there for you based on your major. Um, it also gives you that opportunity to see what companies are coming here on campus and recruiting UCF students. And it gives you the opportunity to start networking with those recruiters. Um, so a lot of recruiters that we have relationships with here on campus, they come back throughout the year. So you may have an employer that comes to the networking event and they come to our internship there and then they'll come to the career expo. They may do an information session or they may table around campus. And so thinking about what are all of the different touch points that you can have with an employer to be able to make that connection and start recruiting um, or start um, searching for opportunities with that specific employer. Um, it also gives you the opportunity to learn more about a company. Um, and so you have some employers on the face, you may think that this employer is with this industry, but you may be actually surprised that an employer may actually have opportunities for your majors. Um, so, an example that I always like to use is when I was at my previous institution, um, we used to work with State Farm a lot. So when you think about State Farm, a lot of people think about insurance. Um, but State Farm actually, over the past couple years, they started to offer technical um, internships for students. So they were highly recruiting on campuses for engineering majors as well as computer science majors. But if you didn't actually go to an event and kind of talk to them, that's a potential missed opportunity for you all. So just thinking about actually attending these events, being able to talk to those employers to actually see what opportunities that they may have for you. Um, so when you think about starting to prepare, you definitely want to research the employer. So for the internship fair, we are actually partnering with a company. They're called Career Fair Plus. Um, they actually will be recruiting students um, for internships with their company, but they are um, letting us use their app um, for our fair. 
So for the internship fair, we will have a limited number of actual printed paper. Um, so we are asking students to go and research the companies using the Career Fair Plus app. So you can either go to the App Store or to Google Play, um, and then you would just search for UCF and you would see the fall 2019 internship fair um, up in the app. Um, if you don't have access to their app, um, also in Handshake. So you can go into Handshake and it also has that same information there. So you'll be able to see what employers are registered for the internship fair. You'll also be able to see what employers are registered for the networking breakfast. So that'll give you the opportunity to start coming up with your game plan. So you can see what employers are attending, you can see what majors they're recruiting for, you can see what positions that they're recruiting for, and then that will give you the opportunity to set a game plan. And so when you think about our internship there, we have about 85 companies. So if you don't do your research and you walk in there, there may be all of these different companies and you may not hit the employers that you really want to talk to. So going, doing your research ahead of time, seeing what employers are there, seeing what majors, seeing what opportunities are available, um, but then also doing research to see are these companies that you may potentially actually be interested in, and then that can help you better prepare. So thinking about your talking points, so how are you going to introduce yourself to those employers getting that elevator pitch together? And we'll talk a little bit about what an elevator pitch is and how you all can craft one of those. Um, and then also outside of the career fairs, so Handshake has lots of information in there. So you can see what employers are coming on campus, not just for our career fairs, but as I said before, lots of employers are tabling on campus throughout the semester. They're doing on-campus interviews, they're doing information sessions. So all of that information um, is available to you all in Handshake. Um, so when we think about having your elevator pitch, so who's heard of the term elevator pitch? Okay, so good. So who wants to tell me what an elevator pitch is or the idea behind it? Yes. I would say it's a 30 seconds introduction about yourself. Yeah, so that's pretty much it. So the idea came about if you were in an elevator with someone and you had 30 to 60 seconds to talk to them about who you are, to introduce yourself, essentially be able to sell yourself to be, to be able to entice them to continue the conversation with you, what would you say? Um, and so this is a general layout of how you would craft your elevator pitch. So you first think about that introduction. So stating your name, Stating your year, so are you a freshman, sophomore, first year, second year student? What is your major? And then what are you interested in? And so that's where that research comes into play. So are you interested in certain opportunities? Have you done research and that specific employer has some sort of um, internship or research opportunity that you are specifically interested in? That is where you would begin to state that. Um, and the second piece, then you want to start thinking about, this is really where you start to sell yourself. So talking about your skills, talking about your experiences, thinking about your accomplishments. Um, so with this, you don't have to put all of these within your elevator pitch, but you want to think about these things when you're crafting your elevator pitch. So thinking about what are some top skills that you have that are related to those opportunities or what are some accomplishments that you have done that are related to the specific opportunity that you're looking for. So ultimately when you're crafting this, you really wanna think about the opportunities that you are interested in and how you can craft that pitch in order to really start to sell yourself. And again, that's what's going to entice the employer to potentially want to continue on with that conversation. Um, I also tell students that this is a good way um, when you're doing an interview, one of the top interview questions that you will get is tell me about yourself. So if you can think of how do you craft your elevator pitch, you can also essentially you've been, you've been able to create your answer for that question. So again, thinking about what are some leadership skills that you may have gained? Um, what are some class projects that you may have gained? Um, so 
for the first year students, it is okay for you to tap into some experiences from high school. But as you go throughout your time here, hopefully you are engaged, you're doing internships, you're volunteering, and so you don't know, you no longer have to refer to your high school experience. Now you can start um, referring to experiences and things that you've done throughout your time here at UCF. And then this last piece is essentially, what do you want? So ultimately thinking about what is your purpose for going and having a conversation with that employer. Um, always having questions. Um, so, you know, a good way to end this would be, um, I see you have this research opportunity. Could you tell me a little bit more about that? Or could you tell me a little bit more about some skills that you're looking for in a potential candidate? So then one, that lets the um, employer or the person that you're having a conversation with, that lets them know that you finished with your part um, and it essentially hands it off to them, but now it gives them an opportunity to start a two-way conversation. Um, and so always having at least one question, um, scratch that, having at least two to three questions that you want to have with that employer. Um, so definitely thinking about this is a starting point, but as you are going through, it's supposed to be a two-way conversation. So it's an opportunity for them to start to ask you questions, but this is definitely an opportunity for you to ask them some questions as well. Um, so I'm gonna give you all a couple minutes um, to craft your elevator pitch. So again, thinking about your name, um, major, what you're interested in, and you can just make up an opportunity or if there's a company that you are really, really interested in, this is an opportunity for you to craft an elevator pitch based off of that company or position that you are interested in. So I'll give you all a couple minutes to start that. Does everybody have paper? I just assumed that everybody has paper. And a pen.
So, who wants to read theirs out loud? Somebody's gonna read it out loud, so I can read theirs. I can do it. Okay. Uh, hello, my name is Ariana. I am a junior computer science student, currently doing human computer interaction research, and I'm also, as well, my personal school projects working on a, a video game. Uh, do you, in particular, which means the company I'm talking to, I know you're hiring software developers. Do you hire, do you, the people you hire focus on the experience of, uh, do the people you hire happen to focus on the experience of the users for your products? That's probably a question I'd ask. Okay. Well, thank you. What was your name again? Ariana. Ariana, thank you. Um, so I would say the feedback that I have for you is to just be a little bit more descriptive in this area here. So thinking about are there some class projects that you have done that can really highlight one of your, your skills or some of your experiences. So you can say, um, okay, read the first portion of yours again. Uh, I said that I'm currently doing human computer interaction research and I'm working on a video games class project. Right. So to make that a little bit more stronger, you can pick something that you're specifically that you're doing. So you're saying that you're working on it, but thinking about what is one specific task. So that's a way for you to either talk about like, are there some programs, um, you know, like computer programs or anything that are specific to that project. So just thinking about how you can be just a little bit more specific because you want to be able to essentially kind of show them what you did. So you're telling me that you've worked on this project, but you haven't really shown me what you've done. So you don't want to be like too long and too descriptive, but if you were to just added maybe one more sentence that kind of talked about like a specific task that you did with completing that project, or maybe a specific software that you've worked with, then that would make that just a little bit stronger. Okay. Um, so, if you were delivering this elevator pitch, how would you deliver it to it? So if you were at a networking event, how would you walk up to an employer and introduce yourself with your elevator pitch? Okay, so when you're walking up to an employer, you want to walk up, shake, their hand <laughs> so you want to shake their hand so which hand would you reach out with when you are shaking an employer's hand or with anybody that you're introducing yourself to right, right. right. Uh, who knows why you use your right hand she can have the resume on the left hmm? you can have the resume on the left <laughs> that's, a, that's a good one <laughs> um so that's partially it or that could be one reason why but we always say with your right because um you put your name tag on on your right so when you do that it essentially if you had a name tag on it kind of brings your your name tag forward so it's more within that employer's point of view so that is why. But yes, you will have your left hand free to be able to give the employer <laughs> your resume. Um, so I'm going to give you all like a minute or two. You can just do this with the person that's sitting next to you. So basically just I want you to practice your elevator pitch. So standing up, actually extending your hand out, giving that handshake, and then just quickly running through your elevator pitch with someone. And if there's an odd number, then someone can come up and practice with me. So I'll give you all like Two minutes to do that. All right, go. Hi, guys. I haven't seen you since this morning. I 
that you're a little bit more prepared or kind of have an idea? Do you feel like you need to work on your elevator pitch or your handshake or your delivery a little bit more? Yes? I have a related question. Mm -hmm. So I don't really want to go up into an employer and just you know, say my speech verbatim. So how do you sort of insert it naturally? Because I, I feel very robotic in the sense that it, it's just, Saying. Right. So one of the things that I tell individuals when they are crafting their speech is not necessarily to write it out word for word. So that's a lot of times what happens is that you write it word for word, then you try to memorize it. And so it does come off very robotic. So what I tell individuals is kind of crafted like this. So one, you should know your name, you should know your major. So that isn't what you really need to focus on. This is always what you need to focus on and maybe crafting it with like bullet points. So saying, you know, spring 2000 you know what is this spring 2019 you did a class project and you worked on this software so when you're crafting it you're thinking more about bullet points so that that way when you're having the conversations with individuals it doesn't come off as if you wrote out this 30 second speech and you're just trying to regurgitate it um, also it comes with practice so what I also encourage some students to do is thinking about what are opportunities where you can practice. So are there friends, are there professors, there are staff members in career services or within the experiential learning office or even that day. So you can say, okay, these are my top three employers that I really want to talk to. I'm not so much interested in this employer. So I'm going to go to this employer, kind of get all of my nerves out, kind of practice my elevator pitch a little bit more. And then I'm a little bit more prepared to go and talk to these three employers who I'm really, really, really interested in. Yes. Now, like on that as well, mm -hmm. how do I create the situation where it's appropriate to, to say my elevator pitch? Because I don't want to just you know, blast my words into some poor soul. Right. <laughs> you know? So it's really going to depend on the environment. So on Thursday, that's Thursday, yes, on Thursday, though all of the employers are there for that. So they are perfectly okay with you as a student going up to them because they understand that that's the environment that, they, that you're in and that it's a networking event. Um, I would say that if there's any, if you're ever at any networking event or any career fair, that is ultimately how employers are, that's how you're going to engage with those employers. But there may be some other time maybe where it's not so much of a networking event, so you may not necessarily talk or go through this, maybe you're just focusing more about introducing yourself and maybe having some sort of question. So, Sometimes maybe you're a part of a student organization and they bring someone in. So you may not necessarily feel like that's the most comfortable space for you to go out and just throw out your elevator pitch. But you can go there, you can introduce yourself to the employer or to the individual, and maybe you're just really you know, interested in their company. So you can say, 
you know, this top part here, maybe not focusing so much on your skills, but then coming right down here to the to the bottom and asking them, you know, you have specific, um, oh, I saw you have an internship program, I'm really, really interested in, or it may be someone who they have the same major as you, and so you just wanna connect with them to be able to get some career advice. So it's really going to depend on the situation that's gonna help you kind of tweak it a little bit. Um, but also it does come with practice. So I get for some people going in and talking to individuals who you don't know, whether it's for a job, an internship, whatever, can be a daunting experience. It can be a little bit of a scary experience. Um, I do for a living and I don't even like to do it. So for me, what I do is I set a goal to, in my mind and I say, okay, my goal is to talk to three individuals. Once I talk to those three individuals, like I'm good and I'm tapped out. So it's okay to kind of have that game plan. So then that way it doesn't feel like such um, awkwardness, but it definitely will depend on the type of environment. Um, and then also just practicing and getting a little bit more comfortable with it. Yes. Wait, what if the name you say is different than the one on your name tag? What do you mean? Like I usually go by different names of my people. Mm -hmm. Um, so you can say my name is or I go by, um, and or it de well, so it depends on the situation. Um, so like at our career fairs, we print out the name tags, or we have the opportunity for you to write your own name tag. So then you can just go by whatever you go by, and that's what you can put on your name tag. Like if you ever may had your own name tag made, then you would just go by the name that you go by, and so then there wouldn't be a difference. Good question. Any other questions? No? Okay. Um, so yeah, so we did that, we practiced. Um, so the next thing is you wanna think about your resume. Um, so for networking events, um, or not just for networking events, but really for undergraduate students, um, we always say it is preferred to have one page. Um, we do recognize that you all are honor students, so a lot of you all are going to be doing a lot. Some of you all may already have done a lot in high school. So that's where coming into our office and we can sit down and we can really help you craft your resume to potentially get it down to this one pager. Um, but you wanna have your resume be as clear, as concise, and as neat as possible. So thinking about how you can um, make sure that the formatting is consistent so if you choose to bold your headings, you bold it all the way throughout. Thinking about your spacing. Um, never use a template. I know people you can Google on Microsoft or the internet. Um, never use templates because templates are designed to basically keep you in that box. So as you start to have more experiences or you start to get feedback, it gets really difficult for you all to start making those changes to your resume based on that template because it's designed to help you keep that resume basically the way that they want to format. So starting out from scratch or I have my contact information. Um, I have my card up here. I have some word templates. So um that's a good place to start they're not official templates but they are samples of resumes in word format so then that way you can go in and um, modify it based on your experiences you want to bring multiple copies of your resume so when you go back to thinking about that researching employers if there are five employers that you are interested in i would say bringing an additional three um just because we have employers who they register for an event after we've already printed the map, um, or there may be a company and you're standing in line for one, you kind of hear them talking to another student and it may be of potential interest to you, and so you wanna have some extra copies of your resume just in case. Um, when you are crafting your resume, focusing on those relevant skills, experiences, and those can come in different forms. So experience is not just about paid opportunities. Experience can be class projects. They can be volunteer work. They can, they can be research. So that's where coming in and talking to us because we can sit down and we can talk to you about what are you? What is your goal for this resume? What type of opportunities are you looking for? Okay, what type of opportunities or what experiences have you had? And how can you best put that on your resume to be able to present yourself in the most qualified way? And then again, just always having your resume critiqued. Um, it's good 
to talk to your professors. I would never say don't talk to your professors about resumes, but also knowing that a lot of professors are in the academia world. Um, and so if you are interested in going into the private sector, so going to work, um, resumes just look a little bit different. But it is okay to talk to that professor, especially if you want to go into like research or you do want to go into academia, they definitely can be a resource for you. Yes. So you mentioned like focusing on just relevant experience. Mm -hmm. um, if you have like, for me, I have a, a major and a minor that are fairly different and mm -hmm. I'm looking for internships or opportunities within both fields. Mm -hmm. Would it make sense to have two different resumes, one that focuses on my experience in one field and one that focuses on the other, or should I just merge them and use the same resume? No. For you, you would have two separate resumes. Um, and so for one resume, you may have some of the same information on both, but the way that it's presented on the resume is different. So if you are searching for opportunities for your major, more than likely that um, those experiences, whether they're volunteer work, internships, class projects, will be at the top of the resume, and then things that may be focused more on your minor may be towards the bottom of the resume. And then vice versa when you're applying for opportunities for your minor. Um, so for your instance, you would have two separate resumes. Along the same lines, because mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned like listing things in relevance, is it better to list in relevance or in terms of chronology with like most recent? So everything is in reverse chronological order, but based on those specific um, like sections. So for example, um, if you have say an internship that's related to your major and then maybe you just had a part-time job where you just worked at say like the bookstore. Within that you could have a section that says relevant experience and so all of the experiences that are relevant to that would be in there and those would be in reverse chronological order so most recent and then going back. And then in that separate section, you could have something it'd be titled other experience, and that could be say your experience at the bookstore, and then that would be listed in reverse chronological order. So how it's put on the resume definitely would be um, ordered in, in relevance to the experience, but then within those sections, it would be reverse chronological order. Yep. Any other questions on resumes? Um, and so then thinking about your attire. Um, so definitely for the internship fair, the career expo, um, the networking event, you definitely want to have business professional. Um, if you don't have business professional, then trying to get as close to that as possible. So business professional essentially means um, a full suit. But if you don't have a full suit, if you have um, for the more uh, masculine options, if you have a nice pair of pants and a blazer, then you can do that. If you don't have a blazer, if you have a button-up shirt um, and then a tie, then you can use that as well. And then for the more feminine options, if you have a dress or you have a skirt and then you have a jacket, um, then that will be um, appropriate as well. Um, also, it's not only important to consider what you're going to wear, but also thinking about the fit. So making sure that things are not too loose, making sure that they're not too tight, that they're not too short, that they're not too revealing. Um, and so that is something that career services can help you out with. So if you were getting your um, attire ready for the event and you wanted somebody to take a look at it to give you some feedback before that, you can definitely um, do that as well. But these are just like some general guidelines. Um, typically we say the conservative colors, so thinking about like the blacks, the navy blues, grays, um, some people may wear brown. Um, depending on the industry, you can kind of you know add your personality when you think about um, maybe like the shirt that you have underneath or the tie that you have um, or if you have accessories um, try to make them you know minimal so make one pair of earrings one bracelet um, you know a watch so you don't want to have an arm full of jewelry because that does become um, distracting um, also with as far as perfume cologne um, I typically tell students don't put any on just because you're never sure of people's allergies and how they could potentially react to it. But if it's something that you do like to wear, just, you know, one little squirt, 
that's it. You don't have to like go bathe in it and do all of that. That's not necessary. Um, just, you know, one little squirt and that will be fine. What would you yes. recommend as far as facial hair? Um, so that's where research is going to come in for the industry. So I would definitely say facial hair, you want to make sure that it's nice and neat. Um, but some, um, some industries or some organizations may a little bit be a little bit more on the conservative side so they may just want something not like a full beard but that's why I tell students going on looking on their social media looking on their website kind of seeing what individuals that are in those pictures look like and that'll give you an idea of what that company culture is um, same thing with the hair um, I know that there are some you know gentlemen that have longer hair and so they wonder do they need to cut it off again it's going and doing research on the company but at the very least i would say pulling it back um you know putting it into a nice neat ponytail um would be um appropriate but again it is going to depend on the industry of that organization um as well as that company's culture yes um what would you say about like handbags or other bags um so because the internship fair takes place during class, we know that students are coming from class and they may have their backpacks and things with them, um, but try to make it as minimal as possible. I mean, if you have your backpack and you're going to class, there's really nothing that you can do about that. But if you weren't, we try to say, um, try to not make it as large as possible. So try to have a small um, handbag if appropriate, having a portfolio so that's what you can keep all of your resumes in. If you don't have a, a pad folio, then just having a plain like black folder will do um, just as fine just to keep your resumes in something so you can keep them nice and neat and don't get them wrinkled. Yes. Um, so I remember the CFE arena, now audition arena. Mm -hmm. um, they had a security thing where you're not allowed to bring in like bags larger than, you know, like a small purse or something. Is that still something that it's, they're going to be doing this year? Um, I will have to double check on that because I do know they have like the extra security. So they have the students or anyone entering in going through like the security check, but I'm not sure if they're doing that for the internship fair. So I can double check and then I can just get with um, Rex and then he can send out that information to you all. But I will double check that piece. Yes. I won't know the official one here this year, but I know last year's career fair, they did let back during the second class, so I went and got my bag. Okay. So that maybe, but I will double check just to, yeah, because I don't want you all to get there. And then I know during regular events, there is a, um, like size limitations on bags, but I will double check that just to confirm um, for you all. Okay. Any other questions on the pie or anything like that? Okay. Um, so then you always wanna make sure that you follow up with the recruiters. So one, um, asking a recruiter for their business card. Um, the business card, it will have the correct spelling of their name. It will have their email address. Um, sending them a thank you note um within 24 hours um and even if that's just a i you know thank you for having a conversation with me at the networking event or the internship fair i really enjoyed meeting you um also following whatever instructions they provide to you so some employers they come to these events um but they may be required to have students apply online and so if an employer tells you to apply online, just making sure that you actually do that. Or sometimes employers may have their postings listed in Handshake. And so they will take your resume, they're still very interested in you, but they need to have that information in their system um, in order to track it. So just making sure that you follow up with whatever instructions that the employers provide to you. Um, so just kind of sum it all up. So one, just remembering that first impressions always matter. Again, kind of going back to that point where I stated that a lot of employers that are coming on campus, they are the same recruiters. And so they're coming here throughout um, the school years. And so you just want to make sure that if you have that opportunity to meet that employer some other time throughout your time here at UCF, that you haven't you know, ruined yourself with that negative first impression. So thinking about dressing professionally, as professionally as possible, um, making good eye, to eye contact. Um, we talked about the handshake, so making sure that you have that firm handshake. 
um, again wearing that name tag on the right side so at the internship fair as I stated we do have name tags for you all they'll be printed out um, so you will be able to have something but if you have your own name tag I know some students are involved in different organizations and they have their own name tag you are definitely um, welcome to wear that as well um, consider creating a professional business card so business cards are not a requirement but that is that thing that can help set you apart from another student. So you think about our internship fair, we have 1,700 students that come there, maybe like 200 of them have a business card that could be like four, you know, four students for a given employer who may have a business card. That doesn't mean that they're gonna give you an interview or anything like that because you have a business card, but it does help you to stand out. Um, business cards will also come in handy when you are thinking about just going to different events and so you may not always have a resume with you but you can have a business card and that can have information about who you are your major and on the next slide I'll have a couple options to give you some samples of how you could format a business card um, listening carefully for names when they are introduced again that goes back to asking for that business card so I always use my name as an example. So my name is Veronica, it's very simple, but the way that I spell it is not very simple. So if no one asks for a business card, you could be searching UCF's website for days trying to find me and you probably would never find me. But having that business card um, will definitely help you to be able to have my contact information on there. Um, and then having a pen and paper ready to be able to write down important information. So again, as you are at these networking events, as you're at this career fair and you're talking to employers, they may be um, giving you important information or you may learn things about their organization. And so when you go back to that thank you note, you can put something in there from that conversation that you had with that employer. So again, that's that little extra detail that goes to show that that employer, oh, you really were paying attention. You really are interested in my company or in my opportunities. Um, and so this is an example of a business card. Um, so having your name, having your major, if you have any sort of minors, you can do that as well. Um, graduation date, contact information, um, having a website, so a LinkedIn account, or um, depending on your major or the opportunity, some students have online portfolios or they may have a website that they put their work on. That's also something that you can add to your business card as well. Um, you can get business cards made. I think the bookstore or the, the, the spot here on campus, I think they make them. You can go online to like Vista Print where they have like a thousand business cards for like $2.99 or whatever, however much they charge. But um, this is just some examples of some business cards. Um, I tell students to have, or I suggest that the business cards are just one-sided. So sometimes individuals, they may try to have some cool design on the back of the business card. Um, again, it will depend on your major. So a lot more of the creative majors that may be appropriate, but just considering the colors and the design on the back of that, because as a, if, I, if I'm given a business card and I don't have any paper, I may write down some information on the back of that business card. But if it's covered with a design or with a graphic or it's too dark, I may not be able to write any information on the back of that. So just kind of keeping that in mind when you're designing your business cards. Yes? Um, is, how exactly should we have our business cards printed? Should the, is it fine to just print it out using like one of the printers here at BHC or should we use a professional printing service? And yes, so... Yeah, so with the business card, you want to have it professional. So if you end up, um, so I know like you can even go to like Staples or Office Depot and they have like the business card um, like templates and you can feed it into, but it's like a thicker card stock. So it's not just a regular um, piece of paper. It has a little bit of a heavier weight to it. Um, so I would say if you print them out yourself and you don't use um, like a printing service, then going to like, I mean, you probably go to like Walmart or something like that, and they should have like business card, like the paper, and they have like the perforated edges, so you can go ahead and just pull them out, but they uh, they would have the appropriate weight to it. Okay. Yep. Any other? Yep. Um, so, are we allowed to use UCF logo or not? Because I know that was like a whole thing that you're not supposed to use the UCF logo because of copyright issues or trade. 
I want to say that if you go through the spot, they have some sort of official um, access to using it, like because they can confirm that you're a student and right. all that sort of thing. I'm not 100% sure on that, but that would be my best guess. Would yes. be that the spot, because they're officially part of the university, has more access to it than like Vista Franklin. Oh. Right. Right. Yep. Any other questions? Um, so then just quickly some final thoughts. So one, relax, being yourself. So again, that's where that practice comes into play, doing your research ahead of time, um, arriving early. I know sometimes that's always a tricky thing because you may have class that day. So just thinking about arriving as early as possible because it will give you enough time to be able to navigate um, the actual event. Um, don't travel in groups. We see this a lot of time where students will come in with their friends and all of them and their friends have this game plan and they're all going to these companies together. So just realizing that at some point you're going to have to be that individual. When you go for that interview, um, you're going to have to sell yourself to that employer on your own. Um, and then, as I stated before, that practice with employers that you may be less interested in. So again, if you're kind of nervous, this is your first networking event or this is your first career fair, that's always a good practice. Or again, even as that first year student where, you know, you may not be ready right now for an internship, um, but going to these events, getting practice in, talking to these employers, because um, it's one thing for me to kind of sit up here and talk to you about it, but it's completely completely different for you to actually go to the internship there, be there with five, six hundred other students, especially for the engineering and technical section, like they are jam packed the entire time. And so to actually have to kind of navigate that situation and standing in line competing against um, amongst your peers for these internship opportunities. So just thinking about whenever possible, just being able to practice and getting used and comfortable to being in those type of situations. And so that's all that I have. Does anybody have any questions? Yes. Oh, if you forgot to RSVP for the net breakfast networking, can still? Can I like? Yes. So you can still RSVP for the networking breakfast until 11:59 tomorrow. So you'll have all day today, all day tomorrow to be able to go in. Um, if you tried earlier this morning, you couldn't, so I just had to go in and extend it. So you should be able to go back into Handshake now and RSVP for the event through tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. Any other questions? Yes. Um, do you know how long we're gonna be like doing practice and then getting into talk, or is it just gonna be like more informal that we work? So it's an open networking event, so you don't have to be there the entire time from 8 to 9.45. So if you come in at 8, then it's going to just depend on, um, you know, how long it takes you to talk to the employers that you want to. But you don't have to be there from 8 to 9.45. So if you had class at 8 and you couldn't get there until 8.30 or 9 o'clock, then that's perfectly fine. Yeah. Yep. Any other questions? I have a quick question that may be good for the good of the order. Yes. What tips do you have for navigating an event where you have food mm -hmm. and you're trying to network? How does that work? Yes. So um, your number one focus should be on the opportunity. Um, so I tell students that focus on the food later on. So go in, talk to the employers, um, and then get food. But if you are, if there are employers who you're interested in talking to, then that may be a time for you to kind of get your food and then, you know, eat it and then kind of throw your plate away and then go talk to those employers. But especially if you get there rather early, then I would definitely say for you focusing more on trying to go and talk to the employers. Um, and there will be high top tables there. So um, the employers will be at um, an individual table and so you can just kind of go through and walk freely throughout and talk to those employers um, but there may be times where they're you know kind of full or they're talking to someone and so that could be a good time for you um, to go grab something a quick bite to eat eat that and then throw that away and then go and focus on talking to the employers good question yep. right, can we all give a warm thank you to Veronica